Let's uh, open up our Bibles to John chapter 14. John chapter 14, and, and let's read verse 1. To, uh, I'm, today we're going to continue on our teachings, that series of uh, the seven times in the Gospel of John where Jesus uses the phrase, I am. This is the sixth one. So next week will be the seventh. We'll finish up after that. I don't, I don't know what I'm teaching. We'll, we'll find out. We'll figure something out. But um, I, maybe we'll just quit. No, I'm just kidding. That's a total joke, right? Uh, we'll, we'll figure something out. But uh, man, we're already at the sixth. It's crazy, right? Like, I mean, it just feels like the weeks of this year are just going by so fast. And um, so we're on the sixth one. Let's read verse one. Don't let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God and trust also in me. There is more than enough room in my father's home. Some, some of your Bibles may say, in my father's house, there are many mansions, all right? So, uh, you know, the, the Lord is preparing a mansion uh, for you. If this were not so, would I have told you that I'm going to prepare a place for you? When everything is ready, I will come and get you so that you will always be where I am. And you know the way to where I'm going. Verse five. <laughs> no, we don't know, Lord, Thomas said. We have no idea where you are going, so how can we know the way? Jesus told him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father, can come to the Father except through me. If you had really known me, you would know who my Father is. From now on, you do not know him and have seen, you do know him and have seen him. Eight. Philip said, Lord, show us the Father and we will be satisfied. Nine. Jesus replied, have I been with you all this time, Philip, and yet you still don't know who I am? Anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. In other words, to see me is to see the Father, is another way of saying that. So why are you asking me to show him to you? Don't you believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words I speak are not my own, but my Father who lives in me does his work through me. Just believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. Or at least believe because of the work you have seen me do. When we reach the Gospel of John chapter 14, if we were looking at the entire Gospel of John, it would be like a biography of Jesus. And in chapter 14, we're at the end of the biography. There's still a few chapters left. But he's really concentrated in the last moments, the last days, the last hours that Jesus is spending with his disciples. Jesus is literally about to be arrested, about to be beaten, have his beard pulled on, have that crown of thorns on him. He's about to be scourged. He's about to be crucified. He's about to die a horrible death, uh, which is crucifixion, then be buried and, and resurrect on the third day. Right? And of of all the things that Jesus would, you know, if, 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 if you and I knew like, hey, tomorrow, that's it, we're going to die. Or tonight, that's it, we're going to, like, what would, what would we be thinking of? Who would we be thinking of? Verse 1 starts off with Jesus saying, do not let your hearts be troubled. Hey, who is Jesus thinking of? He's thinking of us. He's thinking of his followers. He's telling his disciples like, hey. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Like, you're going to see some horrible things in the next couple of hours. You're going to see some horrible things. You're going to feel uh, abandoned in the next few days. But don't let your hearts be troubled. I'm going to ask a question. Not everybody has to, has to raise their hand. I hope everybody raises their hand. How many want to go to heaven? You want to go to heaven, raise your hand. How many want to go today? I don't know. I, 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 everybody put their hand down like that. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Right? What, what, what is heaven? What, what is heaven? What is heaven? Like? Friday, um, the young man that leads us in, in praise and worship, uh, Victor, um, he's, he's going to be going to uh, a Bible college in Dallas, a really famous Bible college called Christ for the Nations. And um, so he had a campus tour, and he asked me, Pastor, you know, well, um, you want to go with me on this campus tour? And I was like, yeah, I'll go with you on this campus tour. So I've almost out Dallas, right? I'll, another time I'll tell you about my whole adventure with Victor, <laughs> that kid. <laughs> Anyways, and so uh, as we were driving out there, 
uh, we passed through uh, Centerville. And in Centerville, we, we, we have a radio station in Centerville. And I was telling Victor, I was like, man, Victor, tengo años, you know, years that I haven't really come up here. But when we first bought this station, and we, we, you know, maybe like 10 years ago, 11 years ago, oh, man, I used to have to come like every week. Like constantly something was messing up, and I was the tech guy, so I was constantly going to help fix something or whatever. Or I would take like one of our tech guys out there. And it was just like every week just going out there. And, and there was an abandoned trailer still there. There's an abandoned trailer on that property. And when we first started going, one day I was just curious. I wanted to, you know, you know, just curiosity kill the cat, as they say, right? You know, they've already stolen everything, like, from this trailer. Like, you know, all the copper, all the cables, they done pulled it out and stuff. And so... I went in and, and man, it was a mess. And you can tell like guys, you know, go out there and hang out in that trailer that, you know, do drugs or what have you and spray paint all over. And I remember when I opened the door, it said, I'm watching you. And I was like, oh, cuckoo. I closed the door and I was like, I'm out, <laughs> you know. What makes heaven, heaven? We used to, uh, one of the names for heaven is, is, is the Bible talks about a new heaven, a new earth, a new Jerusalem, new Jerusalem. We used to sing this song in, in, in church in the Spanish services back in the day. And it said, Oh, Jerusalem, que bonita eres, calles de oro, mar de cristal. Oh, Jerusalem, que bonita eres, calles de oro, mar de cristal. And then we would sing, Por esas calles yo voy a caminar. Calles de oro, mar de cristal. Por esas calles yo voy a caminar. Calles de oro, mar de cristal. And so what we were singing was that in the New Jerusalem, how beautiful the New Jerusalem is going to be with streets made of gold and water like Galveston. I'm just kidding. Like water so clear, man, like, like, like crystal, right? The Bible talks about there's a gate, and the entire gate is made of one pearl, a pearl, not pearls, but a pearl. I mean, I don't know how that is. I just know that the Bible says what eyes have not seen, what ears have not heard, what hasn't even entered into the minds of men or the things that await us. Heaven is going to be a beautiful place, always new. But what makes heaven heaven? What makes heaven heaven is not streets of gold. It's not water so clear it looks like crystal. It's not a, not a pearl gate. No, no. What makes heaven heaven is the presence of our heavenly Father and His Son Jesus, who's preparing a place for us. If our heavenly Father and Jesus were in that abandoned trailer out in Centerfield, Texas, that we have, let me tell you, if that's where He called us and said, "This is heaven," that's where heaven would be. Anduviéramos bien a gusto. We would love it, because what makes heaven heaven is not what we'll be seeing or experimenting. It is the presence of the living God, the presence of our Heavenly Father and His Son. Right? Now verse 2 says, There is more than enough room in my Father's home. If this were not so, would I have told you that I'm going to prepare a place for you? And again, like some Bibles say, um, in my Father's house there are many mansions. So, so Jesus is preparing a mansion for you. You're not going to stay in mine, you'll stay in your own. All right. Verse 3 says, when everything is ready, I will come and get you so that you will always be with me where I am. And you know the way of where I am going. Jesus knew what his disciples were about to feel. And he did everything possible so that they could feel assured that they would always be with him. Right? That they would always be with him. All right, now, earlier I asked, who wants to go to heaven? Everybody rose their hand. How do we get to heaven? Right? How is it possible for us to get to heaven? Like, like, like what, what must we do to be able to make it to heaven? Get to heaven. Verse 1, once again, says, don't let your hearts be troubled. Trust, some of your Bibles may say believe. Believe in God, believe also in me. Trust in God, trust also in me. What does it mean to believe? All right, what does it mean to believe? Let me, let me tell you that in church, there are some people who believe, and then there are some people who believe. You know what I'm saying? Right? There are people who believe, and there are some people who believe. Right? 
in church. Oh, I read Victor. I'm going to roast you all service long. And I'm just kidding. There are people who see but are blind. There are people who can hear but are deaf. Right? So there are people who believe. And then there are people who believe. And believe me, you want to be on the side of those that believe. What, what does believe mean? This word that, that in this version is used as trust, trust in God, trust also in me. In most of your Bibles, it says believe in God, believe also in me. This word for believe, it doesn't just simply mean to acknowledge. There's a lot of people in church that acknowledge God, acknowledge Jesus, acknowledge Jesus is the Son of God or Jesus is the Christ. But no, no, this is more than that. To trust in God and trust in Jesus, to really believe in God and believe in Jesus, it's something beyond that. It's something that pushes you, that motivates you, that moves you to produce fruit. It's something that, that moves us and, and, and pushes us and it produces action, produces a movement, produces obedience. Right? So there's a lot of people that say, I believe in God or I believe in Jesus, and they live lives, and you're like, well, sure don't look like it. Okay? Because they, they, they might acknowledge Jesus, but that's very different than, than believing so much that it produces an action, fruit, or obedience in your life. I'll give you an example. We're going to um, Dallas, and speed limit is 70 miles per hour. Right. I'm going to mention his name. He's sitting here on the front left side. He was singing earlier. He's driving 85. Right. Do you think <laughs> that he believes that there should be speed limits? Right. I mean, let's be honest. We all are driving 85. We're in 70. Right. We all believe there should be speed limits. I don't think any of us are like, man, it should just be a free fall, man. Go as fast as you can. Like, I don't think any of us are, are like that, that crazy, right? It's not the Autobahn, right? Maybe we should have one name for the Autobahn, right? But other, you know, most of us believe there should be a limit. Most of us believe there should be laws. Most of us believe, maybe not when, it, when it's against us, but uh, we believe that there should be an authority figure to enforce the law. And, you know, it's 70 and he's driving 85. And if I was to ask, do you believe that on the roadway there are police officers that can pull you over and give you a ticket, what would your response be, Victor? You're here. He believes. But he didn't believe enough to slow down. As a matter of fact, he didn't get a ticket. As a matter of fact, on the way back, we passed by one of those machines that tells you how fast you're going. And it said, speed limit, 70. You are going, and then it shows you, right? 85. So it flashes an announcement that says, slow down. I didn't see it because I was, I, was, I was trying to nap, but he, he talks a lot, so it was hard. But anyways... Um, <laughs> Nunca se cayó el vato todo el camino para allá en regreso. But anyways, he tells me, we just passed one of those machines that tells you how fast you're going, and it told me to slow down. <laughs> I'm like, Victor, can I drive? Hey, you can drive past there. Well, I, I, I put on my Waze app. Those of you who use Waze know what I'm talking about. <laughs> and I'm going 80-ish. <laughs> In the 70. And Waze says that someone report the police. I believe so much that I let go of the gas and you go 70. <laughs> On the right lane, not the passing lane. Right? See, that's believe. That, that's trust, right? So much that it produced an action in me. Right? 
to believe in Jesus, to trust in Jesus, to believe in God, to trust in God. It's not enough to just say, well, I went to church. I believe, you know, like I, I'm not worshiping idols. I don't have no saints, no virgins. I don't have no Buddhas in my house. I don't, you know, I don't mess with Ouija board. I don't, I, you know, I don't do any of that stuff. I, I, I believe, oh, that, that's great. That's great. You should. But at the same time, what is the fruit that's being produced in your life? What is the action? What is the change? What is the transformation? What is the renewing of your mind? What is, what is the change? You know, I, I, I think I shared with you guys about that I was having lunch with some pastors and one of the pastors was talking about that at his work, um, they had like this um, event and he had like some Christian con bands playing a concert and a coworker asked him, what kind of music is that? And he's like, it's Christian music. And the coworker told him, man, I've been working here 20 years. I never seen anything religious in this place. How'd you make that happen? And, and he responded with, I'm Christian. This is a pastor. He goes, I'm Christian. And the guy told him, you're a Christian? And I told him, I lean over, we're eating, and I lean over. I'm like, pastor, don't never share that story again. He's like, huh? <laughs> bro, bro, don't never share that story again. It makes you look bad. <laughs> you're a pastor, and the guys at work don't know you're a Christian? That, that makes you look bad. Right? If we are truly followers of God, truly followers of Jesus, we believe, we trust in him, uh, there's got to be a change happening in us. That there has to be a, a transformation happening to us. As I was preparing for, for my message, I was remembering of whenever Jesus dealt with that woman in John chapter 8 that was caught in adultery and they wanted to stone her, remember? And Jesus like, Who, whoever hasn't sinned, throw the first stone. So everybody started dropping the rocks and, and walking away. And then Jesus asked her like, where are those that condemned you? And, and in John chapter 8, verse 11, she's, she, says, she says, no, Lord. And she, she said, Jesus says, neither do I. And then he tells her, go and sin no more. It, it wasn't enough to just say, well, just believe in me. Oh, he's like, you, you need to do something. I saved you from that. Quit going back to that. In John chapter 5, Jesus goes to this pool, to the pool of Bethesda. And he does a miracle. And because he does a miracle, people are mad. And, and there's... Uh, later on, Jesus catches up with this guy at the temple. And in John chapter 5, verse 14, it says, Afterwards, Jesus found him in the temple and told him, Now you are well, so stop sinning or something even worse may happen to you. I mean, that guy really believed in Jesus. He healed him. But Jesus told him, it's not enough for you to believe. You need to do, right? To his disciples, to us in Matthew chapter 16, Verse 24, Jesus says, if any of you want to be my follower, you must give up your own way, take up your cross and follow me. That's what believe means. That's what trust in Jesus means. That you and I would give up our own ways, take up our cross and follow Jesus. Romans chapter 10, verse 9 says, if you would confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. When it says there, Jesus is Lord, that word for Lord, remember this was written 2,000 years ago. That word for Lord, slavery existed. Slavery was practiced. That word for Lord was the word that was used for the owner. In other words, what Jesus is saying is that if you really believe in me, I'm the owner, you're the slave. Nobody wants to talk like that in church, right? We want to hear, he's our Lord and I'm his servant. <laughs> He's our Lord and I'm his child, right? That's on the, well, yes, all of that is true too, but this is true as well. And how does, in those days, just think, let's use a little bit of common sense. How would a Lord acquire a slave? Somebody help me out. This is a real question. I'm, what? You buy it, you purchase. And the Lord, Jesus, has purchased you and he paid a high price for you he didn't buy you with bitcoin que ahorita no vale para nada he didn't buy you with with benjamins that that past few years keep losing its value benjamins are hundred dollar bills all y'all carrying a washington for church i'm just bringing up benjamin he didn't pay with silver or gold no 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 the Lord purchased you by shedding his own blood, right? 
Jesus shed his blood. Jesus bought you with his own life. He allowed himself to be beaten. He allowed himself to be arrested, to be beaten, to be scorched. He allowed himself to be humiliated, that disrobed him. He allowed himself to be crucified. Crucifixion was a death that was so horrible that the Jews could not crucify anyone and Romans did not crucify their own citizens. Today, I mean, it's just unheard of. We, we wouldn't even know what to do if we saw someone crucified. We'd be, we'd be in shock. Some of us would get PTSD from seeing something like that. He allowed that to purchase you. Because let me tell you, either God owns you or the devil owns you. Either God owns you or the devil owns you. You can say, well, I'm my own man. The devil owns you. And he has you fooled because you think you own yourself. Well, I'm the captain of my own ship. The devil owns you. And he has you fooled. I mean, you, he doesn't want you to know he owns you. That's his trickery. It's for you to think that you're in charge of yourself. You know, I crack up. I see these people driving around, and it's our raza, let's be honest. It's our raza. Driving around, con, I'll put in quotes, la santísima muerte. No hay nada santísima about her, but la, you know. But what does it say? Dios me guía, ella me cuida. ¿A que les pega un cáncer? ¿Que les pega una enfermedad? ¿Que les pega un infarto? ¿Que... Let, let, let them get cancer. Let, let them get a heart attack. <laughs> Pastor, pray for me. No, no, que la santísima muerte te anda cuidando. It's the ignorance. Those people are blind. You and I don't want to be around death. Nobody wants to be around death. That's why we fight for what? Life. Jesus came to give you what? Life. He died to purchase you. So you either belong to the devil or you belong to God. But God paid a high price so that you would belong to him. Right? Let me tell you that this type of faith puts us at odds with the world. To have a faith that moves us that produces fruit in us, that changes us, puts us at odds in the world. There's, there's a lot of people here that when you became serious in your faith, your family, you know, start picking on you. There's a, there's a lot of people here that when you started really putting your faith in Jesus and, and, and you quit drinking and you quit smoking and you quit going here and you quit sleeping around and uh, some of your friends started turning their backs on you. Maybe your, your boyfriend or your girlfriend broke up with you. Maybe there's start being friction with your husband who isn't seeking the Lord and you're trying to seek the Lord and there's friction or there's friction between children and, and, and parents or, or at work. When you and I take this faith in Jesus, this belief, this trust in Jesus that produces change in us, man, it puts us at odds with the world. Why, why do you think so many people are mad at the church because of what happened Friday? Because we're at odds with the world. And if you're going your life, you believe in Jesus and you're living your life, and there is no contention, there is no friction between you and the world, as a good friend of mine who went on to be with the Lord last year, a couple of months ago, would say, andas mal, andas mal. You're wrong. I'm wrong. <laughs> if like that pastor, you're at work and knows how long he's been there, but he's a... He's a uh, manager in that place and people don't know that you're a Christian, that you believe in Jesus, that you're a follower of Christ. Well, that's mine. Right? Now they follow your Facebook and they, and they know everything else about you. Oh, pero, Lord forbid que pongo que I was at Pueblo's church Sunday at 12. <laughs> no, we're, we are, we are, we're, like, we are in the light and the world is in darkness. We'll have issues with the world. 
We're going to see in a little bit. We are for truth. And then the world is dominated by lies. We're going to have issues sooner or later with the world. And, 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 and we have to understand. And this should animarte. This should encourage you when you do have friction over this. Because it's just a reminder, you're on the right path. You're on the right path. Because now you are contrary to the world. Because you're on the right path with the Lord. Verse 4. And you know the way where I am going? Verse 5. No, no, we don't know, Lord. Thomas said, we have no idea where you are going, so how can we know the way? I, I don't know how long man has been around. There's some people that think millions of years. Excuse me. There are other people that believe that man has only existed for like 10,000 years. I don't know. I'm only 46 years old. I ain't that old. Right? So I don't know. But one thing I do know, right? one thing I do know, and you're going to help me out here. Right? The answer here is one. All right? One. One thing I do know is that in all the history of mankind, rather that's thousands of years or millions of years, I don't know. But in all the history of mankind, there has only been, help me out. In all the history of mankind, there has only been, help me out, one who has descended from heaven to show us the way to heaven. And if you don't know his name, I'm going to help you out. Jesus Christ, the Son of God. There's only been one. Right? There's only been one. And everybody has an opinion on how to get to heaven. Everybody has an opinion on how to get to heaven. But the word says, heaven and earth will pass, but my word shall endure. One day, I'm not going to be here. And one day, my kids will not be here. And my opinions and my teachings will be forgotten. But the word of God will endure. So the opinions of how to get to heaven. No, no, we want the truth. We want the truth. There's only one person who can show us, who can tell us, the way to heaven. And verse 6, Jesus told him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. We have th th These things are together. It's not like uh, these are separate. No, no. They're all united. He is the way, the truth, and the life. They're, they're united. The commas, the end, unites these three truths. Right? Jesus is the way. Right. Only one has descended from heaven to show us the way to heaven. How many ways are there to heaven? Let me help you out. One. One. If you ask me, how do I get to Pueblo's church? I will tell you, 1600 Pasadena Boulevard. There's a street. There's an address. But some of you, you've been around Pasadena long enough. You're like, well, you know, I like to come through Curtis. Well, I come through, you know, Houston, you know, Avenue. Um, like three weeks ago, I don't know why or what, I drove through the front on my way to church. And that was the first time I ever seen those flags, you know, they have like, you know, Dios te ama, God loves you out in front. I don't know how many of you have ever seen that. And then my dad... Um, like two, three weeks ago, he told me, he's like, hey, man, I like those flags in front. I'm like, what flags? And he goes, the, the ones that said, you know, like, Dios te ama. And then, um, and then I was like, oh. And then later on, I leaned up next to him. I'm like, Dad, did you just see those flags? And he's like, yeah, yeah, I just saw it. I go, I go, you know what? I think we have more than a year with those flags. We don't come through Pasadena Boulevard. We come through Curtis. I come through Houston. But to get to heaven, there is only one way. There's only one way. Now, there's this false doctrine 
that has infiltrated a lot of churches. They call it universalism. And basically they say like, look, 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 it don't really matter what you believe. Like we believe in Jesus, but you, you can believe in X, Y, Z. And as long as we all sincerely believe and we're all good people and we're trying to help our neighbor, see you in heaven. I, I used to have this professor and he would ask us questions and we would answer and every, and he, they're like trick questions. So we're, every, every answer is wrong. And he would always mumble under his voice. Hmm, well, that's a nice little fantasy you have. You know, like he would just like say that, you know. It's not true. I mean, let's just think with an ounce of logic. Right? I have three daughters. Y yesterday, me tocó to take care of all three daughters while my wife was here at the um, women's conference. And I was cleaning Rebecca's face, and I noticed she has like a scrape on her nose. I'm like, Mama, what happened to your nose? And she couldn't really tell me what happened to her nose. I don't care if mom's at the women's conference. I need to know what happened to my baby. So I called my wife. I'm like, what happened to her nose? And she's like, what are you talking about? And she's like, I don't know. I didn't even notice that. And then I'm like, well, something happened to her. I need to know what happened. We never figured it out. But I mean, I'm still upset. that I, Man, ni, ni, ni quiero que le toque ninguna uña, amiga. As a loving father, man, I, I don't need, I, mean, I don't know, she has like bruises because she's always falling and, you know, we have little scooters and stuff like that. And she has all these, I don't, I don't want to see none of that. I'm just like, no. sometimes she falls or whatever. And, oh, man, I want to cry, but I don't cry in front of her because then she's going to cry. Look, I'm about to cry right now. I mean, that's not, you know, like, all the parents here know exactly what I'm talking about. Our heavenly father sent his only begotten son. His son left the glory and praise of heaven to come to this world and be rejected. To be sold out by a friend. To be falsely accused. To be beaten, to have his beard pulled on, to be put a crown of thorns, to, to be scourged. They almost killed him. They humiliated him by taking off his clothes. They had him naked. They made him carry his own cross. He couldn't even carry it because he was so weak and beaten by that time. So, so they got someone to help him and then they crucified him. And as I said, crucifixion is a death so horrible, so horrible that today, I mean, it's illegal. And, and the Romans didn't even crucify their citizens and the Jews weren't allowed to crucify. I mean, it was just something horrible. Do you think with just an ounce of logic, do you think that your heavenly father would allow his son to go through all of that so that today we can come and tell you, look, we believe in Jesus. If you want to make it in heaven, you should believe in Jesus. Or there's other options. You can just kind of believe like in this general God and every once in a while when you're in trouble, you pray to this general God and as long as you're a good person and you feel like this general God exists, we'll see you in heaven. And here's another option. You can believe in this man who came way after Jesus, who claimed to be a prophet and everybody, you know, and, you know, and put your faith in there. And here's another option, you know, but I mean, if you would believe in Jesus, that'd be pretty nice. I mean, just with an ounce of logic. That's absurd that the father would permit his son to go through that so that you could have, do whatever you want to do. Believe whatever you want to believe. No, 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 no. <laughs> There's only, somebody help me out, one way to heaven. And that way, that street, that boulevard has a name. Jesus Christ, the Son of God. And then he says, I'm the way... I am the truth. Let me tell you that we live in days where there's a war waged on the truth. There, there's a war raged on the truth. You know, science shows us that a baby in a womb is a living being. All right, you just see, uh, what do they call it, a, a sonogram? See a living being. Now, hasta 3D te lo dan. Own DNA. Its own hands, its own heart, its own brain, its own everything. And there's people. Well, it's not really a human. Same people next weekend celebrating a gender reveal with their friends. So what are you celebrating? It's not even a human. Same politicians who support oh, abortion is not really a human, you know. Also support laws that if you murder a pregnant woman, you should be 
charged with double homicide. Come on, come on, come on. There's a wage, there's a battle in truth. With our uh, eldest and our youngest, we didn't, we didn't know the gender. Like, we really didn't know. I know some people in church that think I'm, like, playing around. No, no, we really didn't know. Like, the, the, at the doctors, you want to know the gender? No, covered my ears. I don't want to know. Thanks for praying. Pónganse a orar ahorita. Start praying now. Like that. <laughs> some of y'all understand. Some of y'all are like, what is he talking about? Don't worry about it. All right, so it's just, it's all a joke. So we're just playing. But with the second one, we, we did find out. Like the second one, he's like, no, I really want to know. And so, okay, we found out. It was a girl. Was, ah, another girl. And then, uh, then with the third one, we're like, no, he's like, if you don't want to find out, I'm okay with waiting. I was like, yeah, let's wait. It's more exciting, you know, like builds up to the moment and stuff. But, you know, let's, let's just say, you know, they, that's a doctor. Isn't it? The doctor says, it's a boy. It's a boy. It's a boy. Gender reveal party. It's a boy. He's born, dad looks, he's a boy. But that child becomes seven, eight years old, and one day comes home and says, you know, or goes to the teacher, you know, everybody says I'm a boy, but I think I'm a girl. At school, public school, teacher is going to send him to a counselor, and the counselor is going to tell him, well, you know what, you are a girl. And you should explore it more. Maybe, do you want to dress like a girl? You know, and, and you should act like a girl, and you should do this. And, and they will just, like, encourage it, encourage it, encourage it. But you bring then that kid to the dad, and, uh, you, you know, hey, he says he's a she. The dad's going to look, and what is the dad going to say? Still a he. There, there's, a, there's a battle in truth right now. Oh, what's true for you is true for you, but what's true for me is true for me. And, you know, as long as you sincerely believe what you believe and I believe what I believe, you know what I mean? There's no real absolute truth. That's what they'll say. There's no absolute truth, which I like to respond. Are you absolutely sure of that? You're telling me there's no absolute truth. Well, are you absolutely sure of that? Listen to the words of Jesus in John chapter 8, verse 44, Jesus says this. He says, For you are the children of your father, the devil, and you love to do evil things, the evil things he does. He was a murderer, abortion, he was a murderer from the beginning. He has always, he has always what? Hated the truth because there is no truth in him. When he lies, it is consistent with his character for he is a liar and the father of lies. So on one hand, you have the father of lies. And on the other hand, you have the one that says, I'm the truth. Not a truth, but the truth. And they're going on a head-on collision. And Jesus told us a few weeks ago, the thief, the father of lies, the devil, comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But the good shepherd, the one who is the way, the truth, and the life, says, I have come that you would have, what? Life and life more abundant. Let me tell you, brothers and sisters, stand on the truth. Stand on the rock that is Jesus so that when the storms come, when the waters come, when the winds come, your house will remain standing. But if your life is based on a lie, you're a house of cards. You're a house of cards. Cualquier viento will knock you down. Cualquier viento and a little wind will bring destruction to your home. Stand on the truth. And then he finishes by saying, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. This is why we all came to Jesus. That's why we came to Jesus. Because he is the life. And this word for life doesn't only mean physical life. It also means spiritual life. It's also in reference to eternal life. Physical, spiritual, eternal life. When you come to Jesus, there are things that happen. 
First of all, uh, Nicodemus, early in the Gospel of John, I believe in chapter 2, comes and tells Jesus, what must I do? And Jesus says, you must be born again. Right? In Jesus, there is new life. There are people that are present here or listening through, through social media or through radio that at one point or another, maybe right now, you're living life and you're like, man, it's just not making sense. You're desperate. Some, some want to end it. Some are ready to throw the towel. Some are ready to give up. As we say in Texas, us Chicanos, some are ready to quitear. Some years ago, we bought some property, uh, and uh, one day my dad and I, we were going out, you know, uh, out there to the country, and we passed this ranch, and the ranch name, uh, I'll never forget it, the ranch name is called New Beginnings. And, and I remember we were passing, and my dad goes, mira, allí estamos nosotros, it's a new beginning. You're looking for that restart button. You're looking for that reset button. You're looking for how do I unplug and plug it back in to, to get, let me tell you, in Jesus, you're promised a new life. New, that's, that's what it means to be born again. New life. When you're baptized, man, I'm burying an old man. And we're pulling out a new man, a new one. In Jesus, you are a new creation. The old things have passed. All things are made new. In Jesus, you're promised a new life. Not only are you promised a new life, but Jesus said a couple of weeks ago, the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy, but I've come that you may have life, and life what? Anybody remember that? Abundant, abundantly. In Jesus, Jesus promised you abundant life. I know what it is to deal with anxiety. I know what it is to deal with depression. I've looked at my life, and, and, I, and, and, and I've seen triggers in my life that have triggered uh, depression in, in, in different times of my life. And in all of that, there's an emptiness in the heart. Maybe, maybe you're walking around and you're like, I feel so empty. Somebody might say, I feel useless. Someone might say, I feel like it's all pointless. As Ecclesiastes says, I feel like it's all vain or vapor. But in Jesus, you're not only promised a new life, you're promised abundant life. I asked earlier, who wants to go to heaven? Everybody rose their hand. I asked, who, who wants to go today? Some of you are like, Ugh. Right? But one day, one day, that today is going to arrive. One day, for every single one of us, we will close our eyes to this world and open them in another world. Where will you open your eyes? Where will you open your eyes? Jesus is telling you, look, this is the way, this is the truth, this is the life. If you will believe in me, trust in me so much that you allow me to produce fruit in your life. If you would deny yourself, pick up your cross and follow me, I'm preparing a mansion for you. I'm preparing a home for you in my father's house. You can have la confianza, the confidence, la seguranza, the, the assurance that when you close your eyes to this world, you'll open them in the presence of Jesus, in the presence of your heavenly Father, in heaven. But there's only one way. There's only one way. And you have to choose that way. I wish I could. You know, one day, my daughters will come to a point in their lives where they will have to choose for themselves. One day my daughters will come to a point in their lives where I will not be able to choose for them. I will not be able to choose Jesus for them. They will have to choose for themselves. Today's a good day for you to make the right choice. Because remember, there's only one way one truth, one life. And there's really only 
one choice. Just bow our heads. And I want to invite you in this moment to just take a moment to thank God that you came to church today. Just, just say, thank you, Father, that I came to church. Thank you, Father, that I'm here with the hermanos, with the, with the brothers, with la asamblea de los santos here in the congregation. If your family is here, thank, thank your heavenly Father, your family is here. Father, I thank you that my nieces are here, my mom, my wife, my daughters, my sister-in-law, saw other members of my family in the past services. Thank the Father that he's here. Say, Father, I thank you that your spirit is here with us, that you are here with us. Will you thank the Father for the word? Say, Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for reminding me that there is a way to your presence, and it is through your son, Jesus Christ. He is the way, the truth, and the life. And no man comes to the Father except through him. How are you feeling? Where do you find yourself? Have you lost your way? You're a little off course. You know you need to make a U-turn. As GPS says, you know you need to reroute and get back on the way. Your heavenly father tells you, come back. Are you confused about what's true? You're like, pastor, I know what God wants. I know what the word teaches. I know what as Christians we should believe. But you know, X, Y, Z is happening in my life and my cousin and my child and my husband and this and that and everything is pulling me and I know that that's the wrong direction. But you know, I love them and I feel this and I feel that and emotionally and I just try and think about this. Well, you know, there, there's, there's a truth. If you would stand on that truth, it'll be your North Star. It'll guide you in your darkest moments. It'll bring you stability in your most difficult trials. Where are you in your life? Do you feel empty? Do you feel broken? Do you feel tired? Do you feel depressed? Do you feel anxious? Let not your heart be troubled. Are you not sure what's going to happen when you close your eyes to this world? Jesus has something new for you. New life. An abundant life. He promises you eternal life. But you need to believe. You need to do something. You need to take a step of faith. And today I want to invite you to a simple step of faith. If you would say, I need Jesus, or some of you might even say it this way. You might say, I need more of Jesus. I want to invite you to just simply say, step of faith. Raise your hand, and then you can put it down. I see you upstairs. God bless you. I see you here. I see you in front. I see you in the back. I see you in the middle. You know what's more important? I always say more important than pastor seeing you is God sees you. God knows you. God knows. God knows what you need. And he's here to bless you with what you need. To bring you back to the way. To let you stand on the truth. And to give you this life that you can only receive through Jesus. Let me pray for you. Father God, I thank you for Pueblo's Church and those who joined us through Radio Hallelujah and social media. I ask, Lord, that your grace, your favor, your blessings would be over them. That you would fill them, Lord with your presence, that you would fill them with strength, Lord, that they would know that in Jesus, there is a right way to go. There is truth and there is life. That they would walk out of here with peace, knowing that they're on the right path, following you through your son, Jesus. And that if something were to happen and when death comes knocking, we don't have to be afraid because we have the hope of eternal life through Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen. Amen.